All right, so today we are going to be going over the VEX VR um, stuff. Uh, if you click on this link right here, it should take you to the VEX VR coding um, website. And then I come over here to number two. It says, let's get started with the tutorials, right? So when you come to VEX VR, you got to click up here on this top left hand corner and it's going to get to tutorials, right? And I really I uh, want you guys to try and start moving through these tutorials, right? And then watching these videos, all right? So I'm going to take away some of coding, start a tutorials, see what we have to say. With VexCode VR, you can program a VR robot to do many things. Every project begins with a when started block. There are many different blocks that you can use to program your robot. Let's add a few blocks to our project. Blocks can easily be stacked together, rearranged, and deleted. Need help with a block? Getting help is easy. Select a block to learn how it works. Another great place to learn different blocks and behaviors is from example projects. Once you are ready to try your project with the VR robot, you can select Playground. Then select Start to run your project. When done coding, you can download a copy of your project by selecting Save to your device. To learn more about VexCode VR, take a look at the other tutorial videos. Have fun! I will. All right, so that is part of our tutorials, right? That was getting started. Moving and removing blocks is our next one. Creating a project in VexCode VR is easy. Blocks can be dragged from the toolbox into the project workspace. There, blocks can be stacked together to create your project. You can also rearrange blocks by dragging them off of a stack and inserting them in a different spot in your project. At some point, you may want to delete a block from your project. To delete part of a stack of blocks that are not within a loop, separate the blocks from your project and drag it back to the toolbox area. To delete a block that is in the middle of a stack, right click on the block you would like to delete and select the delete option. If using a tablet, press and hold the block until the options appear, then select delete. If you would like. All buffering. Hmm. Let's see, where's it gonna go? We got 17 seconds left. If you would like. Ah, oh, buffering. All right, so if you'd like to move a block, you're able to pull code into here, right? And then you're able to move it over to the side, rearrange it, and then put it back. And that's pretty much what's gonna tell you there, okay? All right, tutorials, driving forward and backwards. Using the drivetrain in VexCode VR makes driving your VR robot simple. To use the drivetrain, select the drive for lock from the toolbox, then Connect it to the when started block. Choose the distance you'd like the drivetrain to travel. The distance can be entered in either millimeters or inches, including decimal numbers. By default, the drivetrain will move forward. To move the drivetrain in reverse, change forward to reverse in the drop down menu. Combine the drive and turn commands to be able to quickly and autonomously drive your robot. Right. 
All right, so forward and backwards, you'll see like in your drivetrain, you'll be able to click on this and tell it which way it goes. It doesn't say backwards, it says reverse, just so you know that. Um, another tutorials is turning. Using the drivetrain in Dexcode VR makes driving your VR robot simple. To use the drivetrain, select the turn four block from the toolbox. Then connect it to the when started block. Choose the number of degrees you would like the drivetrain to turn. The drivetrain turn is measured in degrees. By default, the drivetrain will turn to the right. To turn the drivetrain to the left, change right to left in the drop down menu. Combine the drive and turn commands to be able to quickly and autonomously drive your robot. All right, so that shouldn't be too hard for turning. Um, then using loops, this is going to be more of one that's going to be a little bit tougher, that's for sure. Sometimes there is an action that you want your robot to repeat. For example, if you want your robot to move around a square, the robot will need to move forward and turn right four times. To repeat the action of moving in a square, you could duplicate the drive four and turn four blocks three times. However, there is a better way. You can use the repeat C block. The repeat C block loops the blocks contained inside for a set number of times. Set the repeat C block to four and your robot will now move in a square. Sometimes you may want to repeat a set of actions forever. In this situation, you can use the forever C block. The forever C block is often used when using sensor feedback to make repeated decisions. Both the forever and the repeat C blocks enable you to repeat a set of actions. All right, so the reason why they call it a C block, right, is because it it looks like the letter C right there. You'll notice that, right? You now it holds uh, functions inside of that. Uh, Braden and Edison in the chat. All right. Um, storing data is one of them. Vexcode VR has four different ways to store and use data inside of your project. Booleans to store a true or false value numeric variables to store a single numeric value, lists to store multiple numeric values that are related, two-dimensional lists, which stores multiple related lists or large groups of related numeric values. Boolean variables are useful for storing a single true or false value, such as the value from the I sensor. Numeric variables are useful for storing and retrieving numeric data. Variables are great to store information in your project, such as the distance the VR robot has traveled. You can then use numeric variables to make decisions based on stored data. Numeric data can come from reporter blocks, such as the position of robot block from the location sensor. If your data is still from one sensor, but at different times, that is when you would use a list. In this example, the list will store the value from the distance sensor once every second. This information could be used later to create a calculation to determine the VR robot's average speed. If you want sensor data from multiple sensors all at different times, you can use a 2D list. With this 2D list, you can store the value of the VR robot's X and Y position. Using a 2D list instead of multiple lists makes it easier to use the data for further calculations in your project. The ability to store and use different data types provides you with the opportunity to create more interesting and advanced projects. All right, there's that one. And we're going to um, skip over my blocks and go to naming and saving your project. 
In VexCode VR, all projects begin with a default name of VexCode project. To give your project a different name, select the project name in the toolbar. When saving your project, the project name is used to name the file that is downloaded. To save a copy of your project, open the file menu and select Save to your device. Note that your project will be downloaded and saved to your browser's default downloads location on your device. To load an existing project, open the file menu and select Load from your device. If you forgot to save a copy of your project before opening a project or creating a new project, you will be asked to save before moving on. Select Save to save a copy of your project or discard. Come on, buffer. Copy of your project or discard. All right, I don't know why buffering is happening today, but um, the idea is that you should save to your device your stuff, right? So you also give it a new name up here. So it should be like new name one, right? And then you would save that file, save to your device. I would make a folder inside of my GTT. If you have a GTT folder for this class, that would be first period A. And then in here, I would call it uh, VEX VR. And that way I would save that in here, right? And that way I can come back and get that code, right? So um, I'm gonna go to our assignment. We pretty much watched most of these. Um, the only ones that we really haven't looked at is the coral reef cleanup, but then we'll get to that part, <laughs> excuse me. So the instructions say, Work through all the tutorials and watch all the videos. You'll need to include screenshots for a few of the tutorials in the next slide. All right, so insert a screenshot of the code to make your robot going forward for 15 inches and then backwards for 10 inches, right? So let's go to the code, all right? So it said to go forward for 15 inches, right? Now I can drive forward on this, but that's not necessarily what I want. I want it to drive for a certain length. Right, so I'm gonna put it right here, drive forward, and then I'm gonna put it in for 15. Now the uh, computer has it set up to that it is in millimeters already, but then I need to switch that to be inches. And then it also asks for it to go backwards for 10 inches. So we're gonna use the same uh, type of coding. I'm gonna put it in reverse, and then we're gonna put this as 10 inches. And then I'm going to go here. Now, I'm going to start my stuff up and it's going to give you um, like a certain playground to begin with, right? Uh, right now it's under grid map, but there's all types of ones that you can use. Um, Hi, Dr. Jim. All right, so we have um, different kinds of maps that we could use. Right now we're in the grid map. You can make it look like the art, art canvas map and that's up to you. Uh, they, these have different ones on here, but we're just gonna go with the grid map just because it's uh, just a little bit easier on the eyes and square. Okay, so um, the idea was that we were going to go forward for 15 and then backwards for 10, right? And you know, when I press play, you'll see it goes forward and then it goes backwards. Now, and then it, the, even though the timer's still going, my robot stopped because that's all I programmed it to do. I can give it alternative angles, right? What it will look like here, right, on our stuff. So I kind of like this angle. I'm going to refresh this, put it on this angle, and then press start. And then you'll see it go forward and then it comes backwards. Now, what you have to do is take a screenshot of that so you can use the snipping tool, right? And then we're just gonna take this amount of coding. I'm going to edit, press copy, and then I'm gonna come over here and then I'm going to paste it onto my code, right, for my example. So that should be about what it looks like right there. I should be able to see your code, right? That it did what it asked for on this next one, okay? 
All right, on slide five, it says, insert a screenshot of the code to make your robot rotating 360 degrees. Okay, I think I'm gonna add on there forever. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull that code back up, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it um, turn right for 360 degrees, right? But we also wanna have it do forever. So we wanna go over here in this control part and then we're gonna use our forever loop right here. Put you in there, put you in there. So now I'm gonna get my guy, you know what, I'm gonna have him go forward just a little bit, just for funds or funsies. Let's make him go forward for, hmm, let's say 500 millimeters. And then he'll start spinning. All right, put our cool angle on there, press play. He's gonna drive forward for 500 millimeters and then he's just going to continue to spin in a circle forever because that is what we wanted it to do. All right, so I'm gonna press stop and then I'm going to take my code right there. So I'm gonna take a snipping tool, take a screenshot of that code right there. I'm going to copy that and then put that into my work right there. So there is uh, slide number five. Okay. Um, oh, I think I messed that up. I'm going to use that one on the other one. So the other one, I don't want that. I don't want it on the forever, I guess. I thought I, I'm ahead of myself, coach. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this code out, right? Take you out, take you out, turn you 360 degrees. And that would be my code right there. You'll see the robot down there doing a funky dance. All right, so I also need to take a screenshot of that one. Okay, make it turn 360 degrees. Put that on here. All right, and then uh, this right here says, explain the process of saving your project to the device. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is click on file. So I'm gonna click on, click on file, then save to device. device. I'm going to find a folder to save my projects and then save it in there. Um, but I probably need to label, go up here to the top and give it a new name. So let's go up there and put that in there. Um, go to the top and give the file the project a new name. Then click on file, save it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, where does VEX save your projects on your computer? Normally, normally, the downloads folder. Does VEX VR save automatically? No, no, it does not. All right, so there is that. They mean in saving your project. And then the final thing for this assignment is inserting a screenshot of the code in Core Reef Cleanup Level 1 being completed like the example below, right? So uh, that is going to be in our tutorials, I believe, Coral Reef Cleanup Number 1. Close this for a second. Let's see what this has to say. In the Core Reef Cleanup activity, you will use VexCode VR to code your VR robot to drive and collect as much trash as possible to protect the coral reef. In VexCode VR, every project begins with a when started block. The toolbox contains many different blocks that you can use to code your VR robot. For instance, you can use drivetrain blocks to drive around the coral reef cleanup playground. The drive four block will drive the robot for a specific distance. Drag it from the toolbox and attach it to the when started block to add it to your project. To change the direction the robot will drive, select 
forward or reverse. To change the distance the robot will travel, change the parameter. The turn four block will turn your robot for a specific distance. Drag the turn four block from the toolbox and attach it to the drive four block. To change the direction the robot will turn, select right or left. To change the degrees the robot will turn, change the parameter. Use the drive four and turn four blocks in your project to drive your VR robot in any direction. Blocks can easily be rearranged and deleted. Once you are ready to test your code, select start from the toolbar. Watch as the Coral Reef Cleanup Playground opens and the VR robot starts driving. The Coral Reef Cleanup activity will end after the VR robot's battery is empty. To stop your robot before the battery is drained, select the stop in the toolbar or the stop button in the playground window. After the VR robot's battery is empty or the activity is stopped, you will see the total weight of trash collected. Try again to improve your project and collect more trash. If you need help getting started, open the Coral Reef Cleanup Level 1 Example Project. To open the example project, select File in the toolbar. Choose Open Examples and select Coral Reef Cleanup Level 1. The example project will open in the workspace. You can start the project or you can add, remove, and change the blocks in the example project to collect more trash. Good luck and have fun. All right, I'm gonna have fun cleaning up the ocean. Okay, so we're gonna open up my new playground. We are in the coral reef cleanup. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like I want to kind of go left first, and then I want to try and pick up that one. So I think I'm going to plot my force to go here, 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 here. All right. So the first thing I want to do is turn my guy left. I want to do it for about 90 degrees. Okay. And then I want him to go forward, um, probably about 800 millimeters, I'm guessing. Let's see what it says from right there. All right, so my guy turns left 90 degrees. He goes forward, all right? I got some trash, great. Now I want him to turn right for 90 degrees. Actually kind of want him to go a little bit farther, right? Maybe more like 100 degrees. And then we'll have him drive forward, all right? Uh, for about, looks like, so let's try it again. Stop. Try again. Refresh. Okay. All right. So here's our code. He goes left. He grabs that bad boy. He turns just a little bit farther. Now he's going at an angle. He might be able to get there on time. Oh, a little far. A little too close. Or not far. Not far enough. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Turn my robot that way. Right now it's going to turn right. It should be about a good, maybe 100 degree angle, right? And then made it go forward. Ah, it didn't go far enough. I should have been like a thousand. So let's try it again. Boom. All right, we're going to turn my guy this way. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the black stuff is, but let's see what we got. Got some more trash. Ooh, uh, too, not enough turning. All right, so then I would get my certificate right here. And there is my VEX code, right? Mr. Coach D, all right? Generate certificates. And then you can take that on there. Take your screenshot of that. Mission complete, Mr. Coach D, government division commander. And then I would put that right here, all right? And that would be pretty much your assignment uh, for this week. I'm going to stop today's Zoom or recording. Thank you for watching.